oversimplified uploaded hey there i'm mr terry a high school history teacher welcome back to another history teacher reacts video yes oversimplified is back with a new video and i love this topic choice first punic war but you weren't expecting that were you nevertheless it's a great topic that maybe something people have heard of but don't know a ton of detail on and i'm excited to pick this because i really would like to learn more about the first punic war all right, I know you're sub to Oversimplified already. If you're not, you're crazy, go ahead and do it. But the link is gonna be down below to the original video. Make sure you give it the view, the like, of course, subscribe. And if you like what we're doing over here, hit that subscribe button as well. I've covered every Oversimplified video. If you're looking for more commentary, you're gonna find plenty here. All right, I'm gonna shut up and let's get to it. It was made possible by NordVPN. Click the link below and get an exclusive deal with a huge discount and a 30 day money yourself back guarantee. From Hannibal. Introducing our new glorious, breathtaking bucket plushie. Limited oh, quantity I want that. available now. Along with some Punic War character pins. Oh, wow. Buy them or I'll marry your mother. It's Let's your go get that stuff produced early. Marry your mother. Oh, Marcellus. You sure You're have a lot of dignitas. Kiss me. Okay. Um, hey, Dad? Oh, hi, son, just reading the newspaper. What can I do for you? Well, you know how you always say Rome is the greatest civilization in the world? It bloody well is. Well, I was just wondering, what makes us so great? How did we come to be? Wow, my son, boy, let me take you on a journey to this side of the room. The story of Rome begins with these beautiful baby boys going to town on some she wolf Rami mommy milkers. That's Ra gross. You're Ramius gross. And Remus. Uh, sorry, son. You're, You're gross. not gross. I love you. They're called Romulus and Remus, and when they grew up, founders of the empire. Fifty-three BC. That well, wasn't they. Wasn't an empire then. They founded Rome, but there was just one problem. They couldn't agree on which of them should be the king. But they so worked you, it out peacefully. Now you right? do what you do. Oh heavens no! Romulus caved Remus's skull in with a shovel. Here's a picture. Our first king committed fratricide. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. When's the part where we become the greatest civilization, Dad? Well, you see, at first Rome was full of men. Yeah. Talking like a real sausage party. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So we invited some neighboring cities over for a big feast, and then we literally kidnapped all of their women. Here's a picture. <laughs> Look at that one. She's like, <laughs> this is messed up. You're messed up. Ugh. Ugh, sorry, sorry. I'll be a better father. Okay, I'm glad they're getting to the messed up parts of the founding of Rome. The Rami and Rima story is kind of got out on legend. Although I believe there was an archaeological finding that they, isn't it that they thought they found one of the graves within the last couple years of potentially of one of them? But yeah, uh, raised by a wolf, these two brothers and end up founding the city. Um, anyway, I, I I think the point they're going to be making here is Punic War really is a, a war and an experience that shapes Rome into the power that it's going to be. Um, that really is, if you want to say when we were great, I guess you could say it with that, but we'll let them tell the story. So then, finally, after centuries of monarchy, those tyrannical kings started getting a little too big for their britches. So we overthrew the kings and established Rome as a republic. Now, people remember the Roman Empire and people know the Roman Republic. Too many people sleep on Kingdom Rome. Don't sleep on Kingdom Rome. Is that when all the killing stopped? <laughs> Heavens no. That's when the killing surged, baby. We went wild and conquered the Latin League, the Samnites, the Etruscans. Woo! Etruscans are kind of Dad, more Rome indigenous people. Barbaric. You're barbaric! Oh, I forgot to tell you about the time a prophet told Saturn his son would one day overthrow him. So, so Saturn literally ate his own son seconds after he was born. I don't want to see a picture. Here's a picture. <sighs> Dad, look at that. Hmm? That's messed up, man. Are we really this uncivilized? Hey, hey. If we were so uncivilized, would we use communal toilets where we all fart and poo together in one big stinky, steamy, well, dirty toilet room? ancient times. Yeah, Dad, we would. Clean your butt with a sponge, yep, Timulus. with a sponge. All these guys just used it. What's wrong with your son, bro? I don't want to be Roman. This is so weird. You're weird. Oh, sorry, you're not weird. I'm sure you're... Probably fine. Ah! Oh. Ah! Ah! oh, fantastic. I'm stoked. It is weird. Your thought about mega city like Rome, you know, sewage, like what again that would be, how stinky 
everything would be and unhygienic. But yeah, big old bathrooms like that or, you know, group ones. And yeah, you wiped with a sponge. I don't know how clean you're getting with all that, but Rome was the mega city and was technically clean for a city being that big. All right, I'm hyped. First Punic War is really going to set up the Rome that we know it and its identity and confidence. The Roman Republic, a nation that, since its foundation, had been stabbing necks all the way down the Italian peninsula. Yep. But this isn't the famous Roman Empire that ruled the known world. Not yet anyway. This is a relatively juvenile Rome, still just a regional <laughs> power. Baby In 264 Rome. BC, the big daddy of the Western Mediterranean was Carthage. Yeah. Let's rewind a bit. Uh, descendants of the Phoenicians, great uh, colonizing culture. Um, that colonized around the uh, the Mediterranean. But yeah, don't sleep on Carthage either. Carthage coming up. Um, yeah, don't sleep on them. I know they lose, but yeah. Carthage was founded in 814 BC when some Phoenicians in Tyre had a mega surplus of goods and decided to export those goods across the Mediterranean. They became the dominant trading power in the region and to support their growing trade network, the Phoenicians established a number of colonies, one of which was Carthage. Therefore, Carthage began its life as a Phoenician cool trade port colony, city. and the Carthaginians really, really were cool actually harbor. Phoenicians. Or, if you're a Latin-speaking Roman, they were Punic. Hence the name of the video. Oh, I did not know that. Over the centuries, that Carthage gradually Punic expanded from and became the region's base of power. Just like Rome, Carthage was a semi-democratic republic with its own senate and judiciary. But there were also some pretty hefty differences between the two. While Rome was big into farming and stabbing people in the neck, the Carthaginians, traitors. on the other hand, just like their Phoenician forefathers, had built their power through trade and navigating the waves. They were called, Phoenicians were called the uh, carriers of civilization. They went here and there, selling ivory tusks. Yeah, clear up to Britain. And slaves. And as a result, they were rolling in it whenever they weren't busy swimming around in their copious hordes of money in their spare time they also possibly enjoyed sacrificing their children to Baal the god of Baal yeah. let me just check my notes yep sacrifice uh, yes plant fertility oh boy these figs aren't looking too hot maybe if I throw my son into a burning <laughs> pit of fire they'll grow have you tried watering them dad hmm no, we'll try that second. As a result of all their trading, <laughs> Carthage had emerged as one of the Mediterranean superpowers. But wait, they a rival said, to Rome, like straight up equal, probably. If and, and had a had a deeper history too. Like, yeah, they weren't they weren't underdogs. Rome? What the heck is that? Well, I know it's a pretty obscure little country that you've probably never heard of, but this spunky young nation is was about to upset the entire region's balance of power. Initially, the two sides enjoyed relatively friendly relations, and it even signed a couple treaties. But it was a relationship that was practically destined to turn sour. See, Rome had a thing where they liked to aggressively expand their boundaries, right. often viewing such expansion as a defensive act. Kind of like when you Hello. kill your neighbor because you knew eventually they would have tried to kill you first. <laughs> Meanwhile, Carthage was warfare. extremely protective of its wealthy trade network. Sicily. So if you put a very strategically important island between them, well, two plus two equals war. Tensions rose and the two sides began. It's the natural outcome of imperialism, right? Eventually, imperial powers, there's... You're gonna start stepping on each other's toes, right? Viewing each other with increasing disdain, the hardworking Romans looked across the water at the money-hungry Carthaginians and said, look at those dishonest crooks. Bet they've never done an honest day's work in their lives. And the Carthaginians looked back and said, look at those simple-minded brutes. Bet they've never sacrificed a baby in their <laughs> lives. Yeah. While war between the two superpowers seemed inevitable, the event that finally triggered it was a little unexpected. The whole thing began with a few simple mad lads on a wild night out. These mad lads I don't know this story. are called the Mamertines. They were Italian mercenaries employed by the tyrant of Syracuse. Here. But when he died, his successor said, Sorry fellas, we don't need any big burly men with sharp sticks anymore. You can all go home. Aww. <laughs> the Mamertines, as it turned out, didn't want to go home. So instead, they went to the nearby town of Messana and said, Hey man, we are but poor little buff boys without a home. May we come in? Aw, poor fellas. Sure thing. Uh -uh. Just so long as you promise not to massacre all of us. 
<laughs> we promise. The Mamertines then massacred all of them. Well, not all of them, just the men. And they stole their homes and families. Ha! That's this a great way to start a war. Now. This is my best dad ever mug now. And you guys are my new family. Son? Want to go play catch Playing with Among your us. papa? You're not my real dad! Ugh. Chemical bro. Right, Bugus You're not my real husband. Ugh, I'm so trapped in this marriage. Then get out. No. Masana was now <laughs> controlled by the Mamertines, and they began raiding up and down the Syracuse coastline. When the new ruler of Syracuse saw this, he wasn't happy. The Syracusans began fighting back, and in response, the Mamertines said, Oh crap, they're fighting back? What do we do? Quick, we'll convince the Carthaginians to come and save us. Oh no! We're in trouble. And we need a big, strong <laughs> empire to come and rub our bellies. Why are you saying it like that? If I was a big, strong empire, I think I'd like to be seduced. Oh, oh. See? <laughs> it's working. The Carthaginians like their, had long dreams. Their face and sound, they're like, oh. <laughs> Hey, it's easy to bait a, a, it's easy to bait an aggressive person, right? Just give them an opp they always want opportunities to prove themselves. Um, and yeah, get two of them, they'll do your work, no doubt. Of controlling Just give them a Sicily. challenge. They had been fighting Syracuse and their Greek influence on the island for centuries. Yeah, and Greek, now? Greeks predate both of these folks. So the Greek colonies spread out west and uh, in some of the southern more Mediterranean areas, you had Greek colonies there. So they were kind of, they were before both of them, uh, both the Romans as we know them and the Carthaginians. Greeks are the granddaddies. Oh, here was a great opportunity to get one over on them. So Carthage promptly answered the Mamertines' cry for help and sent a force to garrison Messana. As it turned out, however, some within the ranks of the Mamertines weren't too happy with the occupying Carthaginians and they sent out a second cry for help to Rome. Them. When it reached the Roman Senate, they were a little more hesitant. Going to help the Mamertines ran the risk of triggering an all-out war with Carthage, and they had only just finished conquering the Italian peninsula, so they were kind of tired. Plus, it took a long time for... I mean, when you look at a map... Going to help the Mamertines ran the risk of triggering an all-out war with Carthage, and they had only just finished conquering the Italian peninsula. It took a long time. It took centuries for the city of Rome to expand to this peninsula. It took a long time. It's actually like when you, when you, um, it's the later years and like the second half, really, you're talking about uh, the Republic and, and especially Rome, it actually goes way faster. It was very slow at the, uh, the beginning for expansion. And there's all kinds of different ways they expanded. Some of those alliances and military action, but it was slow. And again, all under the guise of a Republic, right? It's not one person like the empire era where one person, you know, has central power. It's a Republic. Right. So there's always this interesting thing about Rome, Rome Empire, but Rome was an empire before it was ever ruled by an emperor. I mean, it had all the qualities of it other than an emperor, but the Senate itself acted like, you know, an aggressive emperor. And they ruled over a diversity of subject peoples, which is really the the definition of an empire. So we can get, I know, caught up in the whole semantics of, of you know, when did they become an empire, so when they had an emperor, or again, ruled a diversity of subject peoples. Maybe that doesn't matter, but um, it's just kind of fact they acted like an empire long before they were an empire. Peninsula, so they were kind of tired. Plus, the Mamertines were all the way across the water. They had never made a leap like that before. So you had assumed that swim. to avoid any conflict with Carthage, the exhausted Romans would probably sit this one out. But you would assume wrong. Rome just couldn't resist a good chance for war. Why? Well, there's something you gotta understand about Rome. See, as a republic, they were hellbent on preventing any one man from ever gaining too much power. And so rather than having one leader, Rome had two, called consuls, who shared power. These consuls could also only serve for one year at a time before new consuls were elected. These measures, because yeah, the Greeks kind of had similar things like that too, where they they were really into like one year terms. Their idea was, you know, how much trouble can somebody really cause in one year, and you know, hopefully, if somebody did good, you know, somebody would follow in their place to do that. So there were times where yeah, there were good leaders that people would want to stick around, but then of course it prevented tyrannical years. So it's like, which which do you think is is better? Right? Is it is it what's what's worse for your society? Having to make a good leader leave 
um, having to make a good leader leave or kind of like the opposite, make a bad leader go. <laughs> Hopefully have the ability to make a bad leader go quickly. To limit the powers of the consuls were noble, but had an interesting side effect. The consuls knew they had just one year to try and gain as much glory and prestige Ooh, as possible. Speed run. Something that was very important speed run. in Roman society. And the best way of Give gaining glory this. and prestige military victory of course the roman political system basically longer than ended that, up encouraging these consuls to go out and be as aggressive as your italian grandmother when you don't eat all the spaghetti and so the glory seeking consuls convinced the people to vote in favor of going to messana and in they went Upon the arrival of the Romans, the Carthaginians in the city, amongst the confusion, were forced to leave. Now, in contrast to Roman aggression, the Carthaginian the military line? had a slightly different philosophy. All right, kids, listen up. If you want to grow up to be Carthaginian military leaders, there's a few things you have to understand. If you fail to succeed on the battlefield, that's a crucifixion. Showing cowardice, that's a crucifixion. Scary into fighting. What are you doing here? Aren't you meant to be in Messana? Yeah, but the Romans showed up. So you just left? You <laughs> left? Sure did. Oh, you better believe oh. that's a crucifixion. <laughs> yeah. The Roman consuls were awarded for victory and therefore tended to be aggressive go-getters. By contrast, the Carthaginian generals were brutally punished for failure. And so they tended to be more cautious. You thought only Romans did crucifixions, huh? ...and restrained. This dynamic is helpful for understanding some of the crazy things that happened during the Punic Wars. So, the Romans have crossed over to Messana, and now there was some red on the island. Hit that panic button. <laughs> this turn of events was unacceptable to both Carthage and Syracuse. An actual so the traditional enemies teamed up to kick the Romans off their island. They surrounded the city and said, Hey, you jerks, this isn't your island. It's true. Come out of there at once. Okay, we're coming. See, Phil, you just got to speak with authority. That's what being an alpha male's all about. Hey, man. Uh, oh, you, you brought your weapons. You still got the horse. No, I, I didn't mean from the previous videos. Oh, crap. Out the Roman legions came to engage the Carthaginians in battle, and they sent them packing. With the Battle of Messana, whether intended or not, by going to help the Mamertines, the two sides had just slipped into an all-out war. And this is going to be a big deal because, you know, Rome's dealing with smaller groups, you know, around that Italian peninsula. I haven't met anything like Carthage yet. This is, again, where I was saying earlier how... This can really make them take the next step, I guess, in world prominence. It's a big, it's a big deal. With the initial Roman victory, towns across Sicily, including Syracuse, began switching allegiance because being a winner is more fun. But you the don't Carthaginians want to get weren't about to just give up that easily. In 262 BC, they began building up their forces at Agrigentum. So the Romans, being aggressive go-getters, aggressively go got them. The Romans immediately oh, laid siege, hoping to starve out the Carthaginian garrison. However, because this was the first time Rome had been fighting outside the Italian peninsula, that's challenging. The water, they struggled to supply their forces. And the, the water, the Strait of Water, is so tiny though, so it couldn't be that bad, right? Before long, they, they're going to be involved in military campaigns later on that have uh, much bigger obstacles. The Romans were as starving as the Carthaginians oh no. they were besieging. They had to forage for They're food, weak. leaving them open to ambush. And when Carthaginian reinforcements arrived, creating a double siege, things got really bad. Everybody starved each other for months until nobody could take it anymore. And they all finally came out for battle, which Rome won. Here's the report from the recent siege at Agrigentum, sir. We killed 30,000 while only suffering 7,000 losses? That's amazing! We're the best! <laughs> yes, sir. Whoops, those are the wrong way around. Ooh. What? We lost 30,000? Always hard We're to beat the, the invaders. Worst. But we won, right? Yes, sir. But we also got our asses kicked. Yes, sir. So are we the best or the worst? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the room. Yeah, you know, maybe you, you've been playing video games too long to think that it's just everything's a war of attrition. Um, yeah, just because you lose more soldiers doesn't mean you're going to uh, uh, lose the war necessarily. Or other way around, look at World War II, um, how the Soviets would lose, you know, consistently in, in battles, lose more soldiers than, say, the Germans. But 
um, we're able to still win, right? And take positions, so. Germans wanted aggregate Casualties can be misleading. Because they were aggressive go-getters, and they now began eyeing up the possibility of conquering the entire island. But they also suffered very heavy losses, and it was clear they couldn't sustain a campaign if they couldn't supply their troops. Sure. Here's the issue. Sicily was an island. Islands are surrounded by water. Indeed. A strong navy would be vital for supplying troops True. and winning the Trireans. war. Here was Carthage's navy. And here yeah. was Rome's. They're not a naval power I yet. think you can see the problem. You gotta wait, you gotta wait longer. But I mean, Rome has always been more of a land power. You know, you might think they're just like the Greeks, you know, on steroids. But yeah, they're, they're still land power. And remember, Carthage comes from a descendancy of the group that has dominated the Mediterranean for centuries. It is in their blood. Historians debate just how much naval experience Rome had at this point. Presumably, they must have had something to defend their shoreline. But whatever it was, it would have paled in comparison to the Carthaginian juggernaut. And so Rome had to figure out exactly what to do about all this There's a volcano water. there, by Come the way. Come on, men. Like see in there. We're not gonna let some pansy candy-ass water get in the way of our glorious victory against Carthage. Charge! You need a boat, bro. Tell my kids... I love them. We're gonna need a bigger boat. What's a boat? I don't know. <laughs> if the Romans wanted to win this war and obtain okay. Sicily, there was only one thing for them to do. That was good timing. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to go ahead and build ourselves a war fleet, aren't we? From scratch? From scratch. But we don't even know how. Never mind how to fight with one. Don't worry, Hank. We're up to the challenge. Come on, guys. We're Romans. And Romans aren't Worm? afraid of anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so the Romans worked long and hard trying to figure out how on earth you actually build the latest Call style the of warship. In the end, they had a bit of luck on their side. A Carthaginian quinquirium ended up accidentally grounding on Italian soil. The Romans found it and copied the design. While the new fleet was being built, the Romans trained rowers on land. And would you odd. believe it? The Romans put together a full fighting fleet of 120 warships in they're not, I mean, they're not going to be able to win naval battles, though. I mean, that to operate a trireme takes like hundreds of people training for years, their whole life with the same group. I mean, for the Romans, really, all they need to do when it comes to a navy is be able to land troops, not necessarily win naval battles that way. And yeah, remember back then, there's not like cannons and stuff. You, the, the triremes, these boats that they're using, these style, you see on the front of them, they're, they're battering rams. It's bumper cars, <laughs> but you try to destroy the ship and either can board their ship or they get caught or the ship sinks and they can drown. Or if you're by the shore, you have your uh, soldiers waiting on the shoreline to kill them. That kind of thing. In just two months, wait, wait. fleet of 120 warships. That is impressive. In just two months, a staggering feat. Now, I know what you're thinking. But oversimplified, if the Romans can build a war fleet from scratch in two months, then why does it take you half a year to make a video? <laughs> well, my valued subscriber, I think you should shut up. People give them too much the crap. What heck? How on earth? That's, that's, that's a plug to you all that get pissed when they're like, it's been this much time. You should do it. You owe me. No. Did the Romans learn how to build a war fleet? This shouldn't be happening. From what I hear, they copied the design from us, sir. Well, how on earth did they get the blueprint, Carl? I, I don't know, sir, but I'll tell you what. If Carl you're worried about people Carthagenia. stealing your data, no. And you want to protect Segway yourself from outside threats, so you dare. And you, time. my friend, if you mention NordVPN, I'll scream. Should use NordVPN. Bye. Do you like corporations knowing everything about you and my then selling hurt? your data to advertisers who convince you to buy things to you don't need in an endless cycle over and over until you die? Me neither. And that's why I use NordVPN. Like <laughs> NordVPN allows you to connect to super fast secure servers all around the world, encrypting your IP address to protect your online data from undesirable eyes. That means you can look at all the squatty potties you want and no one will know. With NordVPN, you can search 
for better online deals in other territories and unlock content not available in your country. <laughs> NordVPN now comes with a threat protection function World War II and stuff. much more. And if you don't like Sorry, it, German it comes friends. with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash oversimplified to get an exclusive deal with a huge discount. That's nordvpn.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, war. yeah. The siege at Agrigentum, supply issues, and building a war fleet. So oh, now the Romans bird. have a navy, and it's time to put it to the test. But how does one wage ancient naval warfare? Easy. All of the ships had Ram giant em. bronze rams on the front. So all you had to do was outmaneuver the enemy and give him the jimmies. Easy as pie. And Extremely so the aggressive difficult. Romans set out for some good old-fashioned jimmy giving. The consul, Gnaeus <laughs> Cornelius Scipio, set out for the town of Lipara, believing the garrison there wanted to join the Romans. As he entered the harbor, however, he found himself trapped by a Carthaginian fleet. And in the following skirmish, he was completely oh, outmatched. No. The Romans may have had a brand new fleet, but when it came to engaging in actual combat, their inexperience showed. Yep. There was just something better about the Carthaginian ships. The Carthaginian rowers had nicer abs. Yeah. The entire Carthaginian empire had been built on expert seamanship. So right. when it came to water, the Carthaginians were better and the Romans were wetter. In their initial skirmish, the Romans were beaten so badly that the consul, Scipio, was given a nickname, Asina. And if you're wondering what that means, just drop the Ina. <laughs> so what were the Romans to do? How could they possibly Get better stand abs. up to this Carthaginian superpower? Oh, well, <laughs> there's something you got to understand about the Romans. Back when they found that Carthaginian ship and copied its design, that wasn't a one-off thing. Copying their enemies was as Roman as punishing oh, murderers by throwing them into a leather pouch with a monkey, snake, and rooster, and then throwing them into a river, which is a thing they did. Wait, what was I talking about? What? Oh, yeah. Copying their enemies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Many of yeah. the most famous Roman inventions were actually borrowed. Aqueducts, chariot racing, their gods, even in warfare. I don't know the Romans Assyrian would get pierced part. pierced by a Sabine javelin, and they'd be like, what? I mean, um, there were, out of Mesopotamia, Persia, and stuff like that, there were um, great water delivery systems, um, aqueducts, that, you know, especially in, in kind of the Middle East, would be underground to help with evaporation and stuff like that and to get down to the water table. Um, but yeah, I didn't know Assyrians, especially that's even, that's way further back than that. It's further back than the, the Persians. So Greeks, of course, I mean, the whole culture's ripped off the Greeks and then the Etruscans. Yeah. I mean, the, the Roman culture is really a blend of Greek and Etruscan. Etruscans are kind of like, think of them as kind of like more like the natives of the Italian peninsula um, that the Romans ended up booting out. Even in warfare, the Romans would get pierced by a Sabine javelin, and they'd be like, wow. They'd get hacked to bits by an Iberian sword, and they'd be like, wow. Like Spain and Portugal. They'd copy the designs for themselves. However, they wouldn't the just lengths. copy it. They would Two. advance it, finding ways lengths. to adapt it as perfectly as possible. And in the case of naval Innovators. warfare, the Romans realized if they wanted to beat the Carthaginians at their own game, they would have to adapt. The Romans excelled at combat on land, not on water. But what if, they said, we could somehow turn a sea battle into a land battle? Sounds crazy, right? Well, they made a couple of tweaks to their warship, and look, here they come again. Board they the ship. love getting their asses kicked. Board their ship. Sir, what's that tall thing sticking out of their ships? <laughs> Board their ship. Look That's where you're going to win toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That, that'll make them blow over. I mean, look at... <laughs> Pop! Pop! Get, get your camera out. <laughs> Take a picture of it. <laughs> I mean, how stupid can you be? Let's just add a big wooden tower to our ship that'll weigh us down and blow us over in the wind. <laughs> I mean, what does that thing even do? The Romans 
Romans had built a big swinging spiked gangway called the Corvus. Heck yeah. So when the Carthaginian ships approached to ram them, the Romans would just slam them. The Carthaginians tried going around, no problem. The Corvus could swivel. Try oh. going behind, the Romans would huddle to the coastline. Genius. It was Genius. foolproof. Those big, sexy Carthaginian rowing muscles could flex all they want, but they were no match for the Roman mind. So, ladies, <laughs> you see, what really matters is what's on the yeah. inside. Please go out with me. And with that, <laughs> the Romans, who had only just recently began dabbling in the art, we know he's not struggling combat, for days. Thanks Come to on. Their ingenious Corvus had just managed to outclass the Mediterranean seafaring superpower. The Carthaginians Brilliant. were stunned, and the general in charge of the defeated Carthaginian fleet. Well, you better believe that's a crucifixion. Wrong, Hannibal. With Barta. their newfound control of the seas, the Romans could now more easily blockade coastal cities and supply their legions on land. Surely, the Romans were now free to unleash their aggression all over the island. Ha ha! Gross. Hey, Carthaginians, what are you gonna do now that we're free to rampage across the island? We're gonna go inside these walls and close this gate. Oh, come Aww. on, guys. Yeah, Stop messing on. around. Come out so we can kill you. No. Oh, come on. And for no. siege warfare. Ow, no. To counter the new Roman supremacy, the Carthaginians decided to engage in a defensive war of attrition, forcing the Romans yeah. to engage in siege after lengthy siege. The war in Sicily became a long, hard, back and forth slug. Something that's always interesting to think about and in the classroom, we try to, we try to talk about this sometimes with wars, is always this component. You know, which side of a war benefits from a war going longer like the longer it goes on who benefits that who benefits from a short war who benefits from a long war and we've used this analogy in in different scenarios um, in our class discussions and it could vary but uh sometimes if you're dealing with a system like a, you're dealing with an enemy that has a lot of people involved and you have the citizen involved like a democratic type government um the population can grow tired of war and then press on their elected leaders to like pull them out of it, right? Um, sometimes going longer can uh, simply be better because you have more supplies, right? So there's a lot of different factors, but a question be right now for, I want you to think about it, you can put this down in the comments. Who do you think benefits from this being a longer war? The Romans or the, uh, or the Carthaginians? One by one, cities slowly fell as the Romans gained ground. Occasionally, the Carthaginians countered and even pushed them back, only for the Romans to rebound again. And whenever a city did finally fall, the Romans could delight in slaughtering the entire population <laughs> and selling any survivors into slavery, which was pretty standard procedure at the time. In general, the campaign on land was progressing Jeez. much slower than the Romans had hoped, and quite frankly, they were getting sick of it. This is what I was so saying. In 256 BC, they decided that something had to change. Hey, everyone, like extended my name's Marcus Attilius Regulus, and I'll be one of your consuls for this year. Look, as I'm sure you all know, Sicily's being a bit of a drag. Sure, I could go and spend my entire year as consul besieging one single city, but they'll never make a naked statue of me for that. So <laughs> here's the new plan. I'm gonna skip Sicily entirely, take my army, and go right for the heart of Carthage itself. I'll slaughter the men, enslave all the women and children, and when I return, you'll all build a thousand naked statues of me. <laughs> Marcus, that women and children stuff, that seems pretty evil and barbaric. No, Jim, it's perfectly brutal. normal in the ancient world. Sometimes we even chop their pets in half. Oh! Okay, guys. No! Look. Okay, so go back to the strategy. It makes sense. It's like you're bogged down on this island that isn't all that big of a deal, right? It's not worth it to keep putting up the numbers that they're doing in defeat, like you saw with the, the, the 30,000 to 7 thing. And yeah, you need a quicker end of the war. It's why, like, shoot, look at like the American Civil War. Like, Lincoln going into his second term needs the war to be coming to a close, right? So you go hard. You send General Sherman and go burn down through Georgia to Atlanta. Go march to the sea and go burn everything in your path. You've got to do it. Politics, right? Politics are part of all these decisions. Looks like the Romans are coming straight for us this time. And what will they do when they get here? 
They'll kill us all. <laughs> They'll massacre each and every last one of us. Yes. They may even chop our pets in half. That's barbaric. No, Not Robert. The pugs. We're actually pretty normal for the time. We'd do the same to them. Who will protect us? Funny you should ask, Mary. That's kind of why I called this meeting. Who will protect us? Protect our families, <laughs> our homes, our children. You guys, ha, don't make me laugh. What? Why, you're just a bunch of stupid and weak farmers. Simple-minded buffoons. This isn't a very Cows. rousing speech. Fools. Rob here thinks enslaving women and children is barbaric. You're a snowflake, Rob. Yes, you are. The fact is, if the Romans manage to land on African soil, we're all gonna die. A terrifying, hideous, Where's he going with this? painful death. Worst is speech that the end of that speech? Ever. Yes. <laughs> yep. That was an inspiring in the slightest. The Carthaginians had to stop the Romans from ever <laughs> landing in Africa because they believed that would be the end. So as the Romans were building an invasion fleet, the size of which the world had never seen before, the Carthaginians were preparing an even bigger one to stop them. And in 256 BC, as the Roman invasion fleet made its way south, the stage was set for a humongous battle that saw 680 warships, around 300,000 men. Damn. Damn. To decide the course of the war. To this day, the Battle of Cape Egnomus. It seems like this is one of those battles that you're not going to be able to recover from. Like losing that many men and that many ships is you don't recover from that. You don't. So pivotal. Remains possibly the largest naval battle in human history, all the way back in ancient times. So the next time your granddad tells you about the time he sank a Japanese aircraft yeah, exactly. carrier. In the, in the, Pacific. the Romans had a lot riding on this battle. They weren't just sending their warships, but transports as well. Full of supplies and horses for their invasion of Africa. They therefore formed a protective wedge-like formation to punch through the long, thin Carthaginian line. The Carthaginian generals, however, desperate to prevent the Romans from reaching Africa, had a plan of their own. As the Roman fleet approached, the Carthaginian center feigned a retreat, luring the Romans in so their outstretched flanks could envelop them and get around the Roman corvus. Common, common tactic in uh, land-based warfare. A clever plan, but with such a huge battle and so many ships crowded together, Still too chaotic, the Carthaginians huh? struggled to maneuver as hoped. And in the chaos, three separate battles emerged across the huge battle space. With the number of ships limiting their ability to maneuver, the Carthaginians became sitting ducks, and all the Romans had to do was start swinging. The Roman center came out on top and were then able to turn around and rescue their pinned down flanks. The Battle of Cape Egnomus was a Roman victory. Also, I'll give you my final thoughts. Be sure to look out for part two for me as well. All right, a great start here. We haven't even got to Hannibal yet. The Hannibal that we all know. So we got that part two coming up. I'm really impressed uh, with the adapting um, that the Romans had right uh, adapting to again to try to feed an enemy that is far superior in a certain form of fighting so you don't try to beat somebody at their game right you got to play your game and that's what the romans are doing here so i'm sure we're about to get to all the brutality too I and mean, we already hinted to it it becomes brutal when it comes uh, on land here and what the romans are going to do here to carthage and then we'll also get uh later on so this is the few first punic war i don't know if he's going to cover later ones um, uh, if the next video does that necessarily, or that's in the, the works, I guess we'll find out here soon, but nevertheless, we're on to a great start. Hopefully I was at, a, able to add a little bit. I felt like more of a student in this one, which was awesome too. So, all right, again, look out for part two. We'll see you next time. Bye.